Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time I've got a movie haul. I've got some stuff I picked up really cheaply and I also have the things that I purchased at the Indicator sale. And Indicator produces so many really great deep cut movies that when I received this haul, which takes a little while to get here from England, I was really, really pleased to get it. This is part of the birthday haul, so middle-aged geek girl gave me a dollar amount I could spend for my birthday. And I immediately went to various websites and within 10 or 12 minutes, I'd spent a lot of it. So let's get started with the stuff I picked up elsewhere. Now, I went down to Laverton Trash and Treasure Market, which is a market that's open every Saturday and Sunday here. It's only about six kilometers away. And they have an enormous market in a disused drive-in movie theater which has been retrofitted to be basically a junk market. And if you go into the warehouse buildings they've got there and you search through enormous amounts of other things, you can sometimes find a bargain. Now, I did pretty well. One's a TV series, one's a movie that I'm going to talk about in a future video because I've got a vague idea about what I want to do with that. But first off, all of this stuff cost me $3.50 total. This is how good the trash and treasure market is for scrounging physical media. All three seasons of Deadwood I got for $2. There you go. There they are all in there. Complete. The packaging is not too bad. But I haven't watched this and people are telling me that I should watch Deadwood. So when the opportunity arose, I picked it up. And at $2, you're going to give it a go. I've seen it for sale secondhand in pretty similar condition for a lot more on eBay. Uh, physical media here is being ditched by a lot of people. And we get these enormous stacks of them turning up at, at various markets and various thrift stores. Most of which are incredibly ordinary movies. Judd Apatow comedies and seasons of Big Bang Theory and all that kind of stuff. And... Friends, you get a lot of um, box sets of friends for some reason. But to find the really weird and the quirky stuff, which is what I like, is a little more difficult. And finding Deadwood was a hell of a good haul. So I'm happy with that one. The movie I got, I mean my $3.50 Wonder Hall, is a kind of forgotten Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I kind of liked it. I am going to do a video about kind of obscure Arnold Schwarzenegger size fiction movies. The Sixth Day, which is about cloning... Set in an interesting future, does a nice little bit of world building. Most of it, of course, is Arnold Schwarzenegger style action film. But I haven't watched this one for a few years, and I remember kind of liking it and finding Arnold a little more personable than he has been in a lot of other movies. But uh, there are a few extras on this one as well. This one was uh, the other dollar of the $3.50, so a dollar and two dollars. And then I also got a soundtrack on CD for. One of the great movies of the last 30 years. Big Night, Stanley Tucci's movie with Tony Shalhoub in it. It's got Alison Janney. It's got Isabella Rossellini's in there as well. Ian Holm. Fantastic small movie with a great kind of Italian-American soundtrack. And I picked that up for 50 cents. That was the other thing I bought from a guy sitting outside a truck in the, in the market. Because a lot of people uh, basically sell things out of their vans. So they set up a couple of trestle tables in front of the van. And this guy was just sitting there playing with his phone. 50 cents for everything on his table. And I picked up the Big Night soundtrack. And I'm going to have to go through the CDs a little more when I go to the market next time. Because I may find some more hidden gem soundtracks. Then we were clearing out one of the rooms. Donated a lot of stuff to one of the charity stores nearby. And I popped in and, and actually spent some money there as well found these i think i've got all of these for four dollars this one's in not fantastic shape but it's worth having and i thought i don't need it in really crazy high definition but i don't have it in the collection i think i should charlie chaplin's modern times i think i paid a dollar for that yep there's a sticker on the back saying a dollar so happy with that no extras on it to speak of the back's pretty ordinary as well but I probably could have got another copy of it somewhere else. But it's not a movie that I'm as in love with that I want to have a really, really crisp and premier copy of it. I just want a viewing copy of it. And so, modern times, haven't actually seen this. 
but I should have by now. I've seen The Great Dictator and I've seen Limelight and I've seen a bunch of other ones. But this one I haven't seen and for a dollar, I'm going to give it a go. I've still got a little bit of storage space left in this room. Then there's this fantasy film from about 10, 12 years ago, which I kind of like because it has Uma Thurman playing Medusa. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Now this is on Blu-ray and, and two dollars. I feel, yeah, two dollars. At the time I bought it, and yeah, again, it's it's not a movie that I'm, I'm terribly in love with, but I think it's an honest little fantasy film. Not too many extras on the back, but it's still a reasonable copy. I rescued it, so this is like a rescue dog for me. Uh, yeah, so there are a few special features, but. Nothing I'm going to dive into because it's one of those movies I'm going to get just to watch rather than do a deep dive on. And not unhappy with getting that for a couple of bucks as well. Then I had something that I knew I didn't have. I checked my database, which is on my phone. And this one wasn't in the collection for some odd reason. It should have been. And so for a dollar I picked up Arsenic and Old Lace. Well, of course, with Kerry Grant, it's a Frank Capra movie, Raymond Bassey, Jack Carson, Peter Laurie. Priscilla Lane, Edward Everett Horton, James Gleason, Josephine Hull. What's enough to love about this one? Gonna rewatch it and I may have a bit of fun doing that. Uh, I haven't seen it for a very long time. I think I may have seen it on VHS when the world was young and dinosaurs ruled the earth. But Arsenic and Old Lace said that's all of the haul I got. And all up one that I would have spent what for less than eight dollars for all of that stuff. And it's a good time to be a physical media collector. If you can bear the horror of wading through endless box sets of Friends and Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon and all sorts of other things, um, you get so much rubbish there. Uh, a lot of people are trying to sell their dross on Facebook Marketplace as well, so you get these endless listings of movies that you wouldn't have watched first time around. And they're really kind of mainstream, ordinary movies. And the world just seems to be filling up with those and finding things like these things that I got in the hall is like panning for gold. You've got to get through a lot of gravel and mud to find the good stuff. So that then takes me on to the indicator sale. They have a lot of things they sell, I think, three for 18 pounds, whatever that is in real money. And so I, I spent the dwindling amounts of my birthday money and got some interesting things got two Hammer Horror movies, one of which is a limited edition one with a bunch of extras, and the other one is probably the best Hammer movie ever made. And I'm going out on the limb saying that, but prove me wrong in the comments. But I'm going to show you the other stuff first. This one I know nothing about apart from the actors in it. A crime movie from the late 1950s. Five Against the House. Now this has got, a, like any indicator movie, it's got a whole bunch of extras on the back. Stars Guy Madison, Kim Novak, Brian Keith, Alvy Moore, Wynn Conrad, and introducing Kerwin Matthews. Directed by Phil Carlson, who was a fantastic director of genre films. It's from 1955. Know nothing about it apart from what I've just told you. But at the price it was, and because it's such a deep cut rarity, I'm willing to give it a go, and let me know if you want me to just do a, a full review of that one. I might put together a few crime movies and do them. But uh, I like the title too, Five Against the House is, is a cool title for a crime movie. Um, obviously it's to do with gambling in Reno, Nevada by the look of things according to the cover. This is one when I'm in the right mood I'm definitely going to dive into a probably love. Unless it's total crap, which I doubt very much. Another 50s crime movie which needs to get a bit more oxygen and a lot more love. Vince Edwards, Philip Pine, Herschel Bernardi in uh, Irving Lerner's Murder by Contract. Now this is kind of crime movie as jazz. It's got a minimalist soundtrack. If you can hear a lot of noise out in the background, that's because it's windy outside. But yeah, I've seen this one a couple of times and I think it's really cool. Vince Edwards plays a misogynistic hitman who you see him build up his career as a hitman and do a few hits. And then he's given the job of killing a woman who is going to be giving evidence against a crime boss. And she's under some very tight FBI and police protection. Now, he is a character who has a very high opinion of himself. And 
ultimately that leads to his downfall. The murder by contract, if you haven't seen it, it is, it's kind of like word jazz as a crime movie. It really does give us something that we haven't seen before. Let's see if I can see some of the uh, special features. Scorsese does an introduction of this one, so you know it's good. There's a short film that uh, the director Irving Lerner did as well. By the way, the DP was Lucien Ballard. Theatrical trailer, Larry Kozuski, uh trailer commentary, image gallery, new and improved English subtitles. If you haven't seen Murder by Contract, you need to check this one out because it is something special in kind of late... 50s crime and Vince Edwards was never slimier than in that film this one I actually have watched but watched it yesterday 1980s Brian De Palma body double with Craig Wasson Melanie Griffith Deborah Sheldon and Greg Henry this one I like because it, it kind of has pretensions of being like Hitchcock movie but it's voyeuristic it's um kind of male gazy it's pervy and it's an interesting one where a kind of jobbing actor is conned into being the witness of a murder so that the real murderer can get away with the crime. And we follow the um, actor played by Craig Wasson through him finding his girlfriend in bed with somebody else. And his girlfriend is played by the horror scream queen Barbara Crampton in a small role. Uh, yeah, Melody Griffith is very good in this one. Craig Wasson's kind of okay, though. His character is such a sleazy little bugger that you can't really empathise with him. Interesting to Palmer. Not the best. It's got basically a music video in the middle of it by Frankie Goes to Hollywood doing Relax as a part of the movie and as a part of the narrative. And it's all diegetic because um, Holly Johnson is singing the song while dancing around the actors. So that was kind of interesting as well. A lot of extras, as I said, like a lot of the other indicated movies. In fact, all of the indicated ones I've seen have great extras. It was a very controversial movie when it came out because it was transgressive in a way that mainstream Hollywood wasn't at the time. Melody Griffith's character, Holly Body, who's a porn star, talks quite openly about what is a part of porn movies and what the industry is like. She does a really nice job of it. And I like the mystery at the center of it, though. Watching it on high definition on Blu-ray, you can kind of tell some of the tells in the movie and in the character stuff. But yeah, it's an interesting kind of mid-career De Palma film, which I like. It's all region, by the way. Let's see if the other ones are, too. Now, this one's region B. Body Double's all region. Murder by Contract is region B. Then we've got a John Carpenter movie, and I'm going to get any John Carpenter movie. I even like Ghosts of Mars, so call me a John Carpenter tragic if you like. This one's all rigid as well. Not his best movie, but a bit of fun. Vampires with James Woods. Who else is in this? Uh, Daniel Baldwin, Cheryl, Cheryl Lee, Thomas Ian Griffith, Maximilian Schell. Vampires and uh, kind of a church-run Vampire Killing Squad with James Woods playing the lead in it. A bunch of extras as well. Uh, some of them old, some of them new. But again, all region. And at that price, a John Carpenter movie that is a little hard to find is not something that I'm going to go past. Big, gory and bloody, just like a good vampire movie should be. I uh, haven't watched it for a very long time and I don't have high expectations. But I expect to be at least minimally entertained by it. So there's that one. Then we got the limited edition. There's only 6,000 of these. I've got 2616 to 6,000, according to the half size J card. Tons and tons and tons of extras on this one. Hammers, kind of a sequel to um, 1 Million Years BC, the Raquel Welsh one. You don't get Raquel Welsh in this one, you get uh, Julie Edge, uh, directed by Don Chaffee, 1971. UK Premier Blu-ray limited edition with new and archival extras, art cards, and an 80-page book. There's your 80-page book with Tony Bonner and one of the female actors on it. And on the back, it's got Don Chaffee directing the movie. Tons and tons of information here about the movie and the making of it and uh, how it was following up on a very successful movie. There is your inside proper cover of the Blu-ray. It's a reversible one too because they've got alternative 
art there. I mean, can you see that? Yep. So this is like a premium package, but it's selling off cheaply, which I don't mind at all, of course. And I've got two lots of um, art cards. For One lot is actually postcards, which is this lot. Basically, they look like the lobby cards from the movie. I'm getting a bit of sunlight reflection there. Sorry about that. It's the usual people versus dinosaurs and people versus other people kind of um, movie of that type. And the other bit you get with it, which is kind of cool, but I've got to be careful about how I show it, a whole bunch of little kind of photograph cards of Julie Edge in costume. Um, some of it, she is a bit showing off her... Dusty substances. <laughs> but there's this one, which I can show you. There's this one that I can show you without my thumb sticking over it. This one, I can't show you all of. This one, I can't show you all of. And this one, I have to put my finger over that bit. So they're uh, an extra that was in there with it. They don't fit in the slipcover. So that goes in the hammer collection. Oops. So that goes in the hammer collection. Uh, not the greatest hammer movie ever, but it's watchable. And the archival material and the extras on the back, which are crazily extensive will keep me entertained for an afternoon and again indicator premium product doing some really nice stuff with some movies you wouldn't expect to get premium goes now this one arguably i think is is the best movie hammer did people can disagree directed by joseph losey starring mcdonald carey shirley and phil vivica linforce alexander knox and oliver reed it's The Damned, also known as These Are The Damned, and this is all region. Uh, if you haven't seen this one, it's a great science fiction movie set on the coast of England, very much of the kind of Cold War era and the Cold War mentality. It is just fantastic. I, I like what it does. I think it's Hammer putting out a premium product. I'm not sure it was terribly financially successful when it came out, but Still, it's one of those ones that's only grown in reputation since it was released. And the fact that um, Indicator put it out region free, I really appreciate. And if you want to see the extras, there are a ton of them. There's a metric shit ton of extras on this one. It's bleak, it's interesting, and it's something that is just that little bit different from so much science fiction the cinema that we got in the 1960s so much of it was aspirational about traveling to other places so much of it was fearful as well and this one is almost a cautionary tale about responding to the threat of nuclear war and it is totally worth having in your collection if you don't already i'm really happy to have this one of all of the movies i got in this haul this is the one where I'm most pleased in that part of my brain that loves cinema to have a copy of. So many of Joseph Losey's movies are a little hard to find around the place. But I think he was an interesting director. I think he was an interesting auteur. And if you go through Joseph Losey's movie oeuvre, I think you're going to find lots and lots of, of serious stuff. Some not so serious like Modesty Blaze, for instance. But he was somebody who had a distinct viewpoint and a distinct vision. And even though he was working through the machinery of Hammer Studios, I think he really delivered on this one. And it is a premium Hammer movie. And for me, probably one of the two or three best movies Hammer ever put out. And it should be in your collection. So that's it for this time around. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and leave a comment. You can also donate to support the channel at patreon.com slash terrytalksmovies. On the weekend, I've got a couple more English science fiction movies from the 1960s, which is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, they're not the best movies in the world, but they're entertaining and have some features of interest. So until then, look after yourselves. 
watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Go out to junky places and just find treasure among the dross. And I'll catch you next time.